Today I'll be showing you how we generated $63,000 in two weeks for one of our e-commerce brands. I'll be breaking down exactly what happened during these two weeks and in fact it's actually two weeks in one day and you'll see why during this video I add this one extra day in there. My name is Justin and I'm the founder of Boizo Media, an e-commerce marketing agency specializing in elevating private brands by simplifying e-commerce growth. Before we get started, make sure to leave a like, subscribe as well as turn on post notifications to be one of the first to know about these cutting edge e-commerce marketing tips post on our channel every week. So let's get going. I am about to show you exactly the results that we had at the platforms and kind of bring you through all of the strategy and what was in our mind and in our team's mind, you know, before even making this happen. So the overview, here are the results. So as you can see, there's going to be sort of three different time frames. There's going to be two separate weeks and the one day that I mentioned in the intro of this video. So those are three separate product launches. The way this brand works is a little bit unorthodox. So they work with product launches. They launch key products or key collections at specific times. And there are a lot of sales in a very small time frame. So top left corner, you can see a product launch that we did with them in March, which was actually more from March 23rd onwards. So during that period, we spent over $5,200, which brought back almost $23,000 in ad attributed revenue. So for a ROAS of 4.4 and then the launch in April, which you can see top right, we spent a little less on that launch, but nonetheless, it generated pretty much as much as the launch prior. So that led to a much bigger ROAS. We actually only spent $1,300 and still managed to generate a ROAS of 16.5 during that time period. And now here's the one day results. So what I mean by one day is that I am recording this video just a day after a third product launch, which I still wanted to integrate in this video because I do think it still adds value and I'll be able to kind of detail what we did differently in yesterday's launch. But obviously the stats are only for a day and not for a full week as the two launches above, you know, were. But nonetheless, yesterday, which you can see bottom left corner through only Facebook ads and a little bit of TikTok, which I'll share in a second, we spent $3,400 and generated over $18,500 within the initial launch day. And that actually happened after 5 p.m. at night. So it was a pretty short time frame to make this happen. And bottom right, I also wanted to include that in the video just for the sake of it, because we did spend a little bit on TikTok too. So we spent about $100 Canadian on TikTok, which was more of a traffic source for us than anything else. We're not really going for conversions. Uh, TikTok for us, honestly, with that client, just brings traffic more than anything else. Uh, led to 72 clicks and over 17,800 impressions yesterday. Now, if we compare these three time frames again on Shopify, so you can see the initial launch top left, so the one in March, then the one to the right, which you can see the April launch. So you can kind of see that ads are about, uh, you know, are responsible for about 20 to 25 percent of a launch's revenue. So from that time period, we're about responsible for 20 to 25 percent of their total rev in that time period, except yesterday, which I'll get to in the next few seconds. And uh, yesterday essentially well, is $60,000. And as you saw earlier, we're actually a little less than $60,000, almost that number. And yesterday we were very close to the $20,000 mark. So we're basically a little bit, uh, a little bit more in the number of revenue generated. And we also helped them with part of the email, which I'll get to in a second. But yesterday ad only is about 30% of the generated revenue. It was also almost a tie between yesterday's launch day and a launch day in April. So April 6th, the revenue was very similar in both launch days. Uh, which were both pretty, you know, a lot higher actually than what it was in March, which March was barely broke above the $50,000 mark. And we're much closer to the $60,000 mark in both the April and the May launch. So now the reason behind you clicking on this video, the process of how we made that 
happen. So let's first start talking about what happened before the launch, because I believe this is the most important part that leads to such results is everything that happens before a launch. So basically the phase that happens a couple of days before the launch, I would call that more of a list building and engagement phase. So what we started doing seven days before the launch day is having two types of campaigns. The first one being lead generation campaigns and the second one being video view slash engagement campaigns. So let me start by breaking those down. And by the way, let me tell you that this is a new strategy we're using for that brand. So we've been working with them for around seven to eight months at this point. Um, the first launches that we did with them all the way up to, you know, and that includes again, the March launch, we only ran campaigns on the launch start, nothing prior to it. April was the first launch, which we started running more engagement campaigns prior to the launch. And actually that launch that just happened yesterday at the time of recording this video was more of an engagement and lead generation prior to it, which all break down in the upcoming minutes. So with those lead generation campaigns, the goal behind running those is we realized that for every launch, emails were responsible for about 25% of the revenue. Yesterday on the launch date, it was about 27% of the revenue, which was attributed to email. So we knew this was an opportunity to capitalize on. If we could get a little bit of added revenue to the email pool, we know that the client would capitalize even more on this launch. So hence why we offered a small discount essentially for anybody who would register with their email and opt in essentially into our lead generation campaign. And they were some of the first audience to know about that launch as they received an email and an SMS, you know, upon the launch happening. Then the second type of campaign was more cold video view campaigns or uh, essentially teasers. So what we did is seven days prior to the launch, there was a uh, teaser that was released around kind of the story behind the launch. Um, essentially, what was that collection about? And we started pushing on cold, essentially video views to that teaser engagements also to some of the other posts the brand made organically because we wanted to be able to retarget them on a launch day, which I'll get to on my next slide. So, so what we started doing about seven days prior to the launch, same thing for lead gen. And then storytelling was also a very big part of what we did differently during that last launch, because instead of just focusing on the products, which is something that we usually did in the past, straight up from again, the launch day. And in our first time in April, running engagement, it was more engagement about the products themselves, but it was nothing around the, the true meaning behind these collections. The way this brand works with their launches and their products, there's always some form of hidden meaning around these collections. It's always related to either a political issue or either something happening in the world, or there's something again, that is behind the reason for this collection even coming to life. So, what we're doing is we're also we also recommended and worked with the brand owner to create ads together and create organic posts that would be about as an example the owner telling the story for that upcoming collection and putting the owner more in front of the camera to speak more from again the bottom of their heart about why they made that collection and also talking about the products themselves so the materials the uh you know the process behind making this happen and all of their vision coming to life and then finally we dripped additional teasers and products both organically and with ads so on top of the teaser that was more general around the, the general idea around the collection, we started actually dripping the products. So basically every single day before the launch, we dripped a new product live on ads. So we uploaded new ads basically every single day to push a new product, showcase it to the audience. And again, aim for more engagement, traffic or video views to be able to retarget them later on. Now for the launch time. So first thing I'm going to say is for a product launch or a collection launch or any type of event happening at a specific time with your ad campaigns, you want to make sure that you launch everything or at least schedule it in the ads manager at least a day or two, ideally prior to the launch happening because you are for a fact going to see something wrong happening with your ads. Would that be again an ad getting rejected? Would that be an error in the scheduling or an error in the targeting? There are always errors. So you want to plan for errors and you want to make sure that you have enough time to fix those errors before a launch happens because you have a very small 
conversion window essentially to make things happen. And in our case, as you may have seen earlier from the Shopify screenshots I shown, most of the numbers coming from the launch are on the first day and within the first hour. So timing is very important with that brand. So on top of scheduling the ads a couple of days prior, we've also scheduled the ads to go live an hour to an hour and a half prior to their actual launch. It's better to be early because it takes times for every single app platform to start delivering your ads and start putting budget onto them. So we'd rather be a little early and you know risk worst case sending traffic to the websites. Um, but basically it, just, just making sure that Facebook has enough time to start spending the same thing with TikTok. Then, Obviously, as I mentioned earlier, the goal behind running video view campaigns and engagement campaigns and lead generation campaigns was also to retarget these people during the launch. So we created a separate campaign that we called more of a second touch point campaign for quote unquote, a warm audience, because these guys are already somewhat aware of the new collection because we've shown it to them through this dripped, you know, content prior to the launch but it's all the cold audience. None of them have purchased before. So we still knew like we call it a warm audience, but none of them have ever purchased their all new customers that are just warm to the idea of this launch. So that is something that we started running as soon as the launch happened. Then the owner went live on Instagram, which always works amazing. It's something I recommend every event to do whenever you have like a big product launch or event coming up. Um, it creates, you know, stronger engagement and this sense of community with your audience. And then there was TikTok, which as I mentioned earlier, we started using as a traffic channel more than anything else because the owner behind this brand is an influencer. So this is more of an influencer led brand and making sure that we put her face you know, in the forefront of the brand was key to getting a bigger ROI because she's pretty known within the space and we wanted to capitalize on that both on Facebook and IG, but also on TikTok as she is starting to build a pretty substantial personal brand on that channel as well. So we are only running Spark ads actually at the moment on TikTok for that launch and so did we in April. But in the previous launch, actually in March, we did not use TikTok from what I remember. And then obviously the email and SMS campaigns were sent, you know, from the leads that we brought in a couple of days prior and the leads that they already had in their list. So that helped, as mentioned earlier, generate about 27% of yesterday's revenue and very similar numbers for the two previous launches, about 25% of these. And then in all previous launches, the same thing's happening today because we're day two essentially from the launch. There's a heavy switch to cold sales. So what I say by this, and let me explain myself honestly on how we split budget for these launches. So a big part of the budget, actually probably about 20% of the budget is spent before the launch even happens, just to get engagement, to get video views, to get essentially uh, leads for their email, which we can all retarget that as soon as the launch happens. So it's more of a re-engagement campaign because again, it's, it's basically a cold just with like a second or third touch points. So what we're doing with this is a big chunk of the budget is put on that when the launch happens, as well as their current audience. And there's still a small portion of the budget, maybe 20% pulled on true cold within the launch. But again, it's more of a warm that, you know, people that already use that have been doing video engagement for the past seven days, they're, current audience, you know, or people that have purchased in the past and about a 20% on true cold. And then on day two, it's actually a full switch where most of the budget is spent on colds um, and a little bit on what's left from the warm audience that has not been, you know, tapped into yet. And then very little on retargeting. But keep in mind, just as a disclaimer, I just want to make sure I set the facts straight. So it's still primarily cold within the launch day just more again warm because people have been used to these video views campaigns prior, but all first purchasers with most of the budget. So all in all, again, as a recap, this is what led to these results. It is the best first day in ad results we've ever had for this brand. So they generated over $18,500 within the first day only. If we compare that to April as an example, which they generated about $12,000 from the first day of ads and about 10,000 in the previous launch in March. So definitely, you know, bulk of the results come from the first day. And yesterday we generated the most of that again on that day. It's not per se the first day that we've spent the most, but it's the spend that happened prior to the launch that really led 
to this increase in results within that initial launch day. So that is how we generated an extra $63,000 in two weeks and one day for our e-commerce underwear brand. And now if you're an e-commerce store owner or brand making at least 20 to $30,000 a month with your brand, I invite you to click on the first link in the description down below and book in a very short 15 minute demo call with our team. On that call, we'll take a look at your brand and see if you're a good fit for our e-commerce marketing program. And if that's the case, we'll help you scale and achieve your targets. And if not, worse comes to worse, you'll leave with a free action plan to implement on your own. Make sure you check out other videos on the channel for some more useful e-commerce marketing tips. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. Uh -huh.